Good evening. Good to be with you today. We are looking at the book of Jude. Last week we did the introduction. If you uh, didn't see that, I would advise you and ask you to go back and look at the introduction of Jude. We got the introduction and did the first three uh, verses in the book of Jude. The Jude is a book about basically being faithful. I like we have some things recorded in Jude that's not recorded anyplace else in the Bible. It's a fascinating book. We, uh, we read here, and I'm going to go back and read three, uh, starting there for the subject. It says here in verse 3, Beloved, while I was very diligently to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you that you should, that you should uh, continue earnestly for the faith which was once and for all delivered to the saints. He wanted us, he said, I, I'm wanting you to remain faithful. It's not enough, and we need to realize that. As a preacher, as an elder, as a teacher, or whatever it is, as just being a Christian, it's not enough just to go out and teach people the gospel. It's not enough just to teach people the gospel. We have to realize, we have to also teach them, train them what they are to do. So oftentimes, I'm gonna put this like when I was out west and living and I spent some time trying to train horses. I wasn't good at it, but I enjoyed training horses. And I would know people would green break a horse, get it so that it wouldn't buck you off. But then they would ask me, they said, Carter, can you ride this horse every day a little bit to train it? Why? Well, it wouldn't buck. But the thing about it is, it didn't know what the pressure of the legs meant. It didn't know how to, to neck rein with the, with the reins. It didn't know how to back up. It just knew not to buck. <laughs> Does that make sense? Well, a lot of times we can see earnestly contending for the faith. We have to know, some, some think that what we have to do is stop sinning. That's correct. But we have to know what to do for the Lord. Because if we don't watch out, and I've seen it, where somebody would break a horse, said, well, it's not bucking anymore, then they would not get on to it. They would not get on it, not put a saddle on it for six months or a year. Then they would get on it and it might buck a little bit because it would forget. It, it, was, it would go back to where it was. So you have to keep training a horse or else it will go backwards. Christianity is that way. Christianity is the same way. Here it goes on in verse 4. It says, For certain that we are to do what? It says that we should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago was marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turned the grace of our God into lawlessness and deny the only Lord God in our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, there was people that was coming in and denying that Jesus was the Christ. I'm going to tell you something breaks my heart. Years ago, and I mean years ago, back in the 1970s, I was preaching in a small town in, in Sublette, Kansas. And there wasn't but a few church buildings there in town, about five different religious groups. One man that was a friend of mine came to me and he was all upset because there was a new preacher that had came in and preaching for him. He came to me and he said, Carter, I don't know what to do. I said, why? He said, well, there was a, the, the preacher got up and he said that we could believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin if we wanted to. What? If we what? Wanted to. He was, the preacher was saying that. Matter of fact, he, he did not believe that the stories of the Old Testament. He told them they was illustrations. Like, a, like a, the Canterbury Tales or something like an illustration. But he was saying, I, I can remember how that man felt. And how I felt, because I didn't know a man that preached at a church, a well-known church, would say, you could believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin if you what? Wanted to. 
There's people even today that as they got the filling pulpits of what is supposed to be Christian groups and churches that are teaching this same thing. We need to be aware today that this is going on. But he says, but I want to remind you, though you once do this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed those who did not believe. After what? After delivering those out of Egypt, they, they, he destroyed those who did not believe. Now we think about this and we need to remember, did they believe? Well, they saw the, the far above them. They saw the, the smoke and the far behind them keeping the Egyptian from catching up to them. They even saw the when Moses took the rod in the ocean piled up uh, on either side and they walked across in dry land where they was baptized by the water and the cloud. They was covered up. But even after doing that, they did not, and they started wanting to go back. They was there, and then they said, let us go back to the cucumbers of Egypt. Let us go back because of their unfaith. So it is with today. It says, hey, we need to remember what happened to those well, what happened to them, every man that was 20, every, every adult that was 20 years of age of older, because of their unfaith, they died in the wilderness. They was there for 40 years, but there was no one that crossed over that was an adult that went into the promised land. Why? Because what did they do? They denied. But I want to tell you afterwards, he what? He destroyed them who did not believe they believed enough to go out of Egypt but they didn't believe enough to go into the promised land we have people that say they're going out of sin but then they don't believe enough to get into the promised land of heaven that's, that's the same way we have to what we have to go we can go across the baptism we can be baptized but we have to be faithful till we get to the promised land, the heavenly home that God has for us. This is the ex one example. In verse 6, it goes to another. and says, And the angels who did not keep their proper dominion, but left their own abode, he has reserved an everlasting change under the darkness for the judgment of the great day. Even the angels who chose, oh, and there's a lot of people try to get into a lot of explanation and, and expert. There's too many experts on this. I just know it happened. Somebody said, it's because, it's because. I tell you why the devils fell, why the devil fell from heaven, why the angel fell. It's because they did not keep their proper do dominion. They did not do what they were supposed to do. Somebody said, well, what was that? Whatever God told them to do, they didn't do it. It don't matter what it was. It don't matter to us if we lie, if we cheat, if we steal. Which one of them is going to get us into, uh, into hell and out of heaven? Any one of them. Any one of them. The Satan, I don't know exactly what it was about, but he chose not to obey God. Amen? Amen. And that's why we have to choose to obey God. This is our example, that we should not do that. And it says, even another example, it says, as Solomon and Gomorrah and the cities around them, in a similar manner to this, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and going after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. What did they do? They did things, they acted physically against God's will. In America, we think so often times that, and realize we say, well, God made man and women equal. And I agree with that. I agree with that totally. Men and women are equally. Equal. We are equal in the eyes of God. But we are different <laughs> in the eyes of God. We are different. 
We are different in what we do and how we act. We are different in that a man is to be with a woman and a woman is supposed to be with a man. That's what God commands. Solomon and Gomorrah went after the flesh. Anything that they could fleshly do was okay. That's not right with God. And it says that was an example. It says here, it says, what did they do? Set for an example, suffer the vengeance of what? Eternal fire. It says, likewise, verse 8, likewise also, these dreamers defiled the flesh, rejected authority, and, and speak evil of a dominion. What did they do? They spoke what? They dreamers defiled the flesh and rejected authority. And I'm not, I don't think here it's talking about civil authority even at this time i know we are to those that have the rules over us but he's talking about the authority of god's word when talking to some people about sin if it's homosexuality I, I, how they fight against god's word is that they do this this is what they say i think Well, first of all, if somebody says, I think, a lot of times they haven't put enough thought to it. Amen. Because <laughs> the authority is in the Word of God. Amen. The stop sign. I know a lot of people, and I've had police. I had an uncle that was a policeman. He said so often time he would give a ticket to somebody that slowed down and coasted kind of through a stop sign. He would give them a ticket. They said, well, we stopped. He said, no, you didn't stop. You kept rolling. But I took my hand, I took my finger off the, uh, I took my, you know, my foot off the gas. Said, yeah, but that's not stopping. <laughs> it's not stopping. We need to stop sinning and realize it's not our choice or our definition of what sin is. It's God's. Let's say that again. It's our, not our definition of what sin is. It's what? God. And matter of fact, I get tired of people saying, well, he does a big sin, I do a little sin. There is no big sin or little sin. In some cultures, if you lie, they kill you. But they let you steal. Some culture, you can steal, but don't lie. It's just funny how we, we think one sin is worse than another. No, there's not one sin worse than another. We choose, you know, we choose to say, well, that's not a sin. You know, homosexuality, that's not a sin. Uh, adultery, that's not a sin. Uh, stealing, how much did they take? Oh, that's not a sin. <laughs> we like to say, but God, we need to know that this book is telling us if we sin, what? If we sin, we are guilty of displeasing God. If we sin by doing something wrong. Now next week, we're going to look, keep on looking at this book, and we're going to look at when you do something, you also got to do it right. God be with you till we meet again.